What is going on YouTube? My name is Peyton, aka Mr. Recruiter, and I am from the Everything College Basketball Podcast slash Facebook group. <clears throat> and for today's episode of Captain Down to Tip Off, play you review. Last episode I reviewed Ty Tiger Washington, Kentucky's star freshman point guard. And today I am reviewing UCLA star junior uh, forward slash guard Johnny Juzong. I know I said in the last episode that I was just going to be doing top incoming freshmen, but I got a lot of reviews and a lot of comments about how I should start doing, um, let's start implementing like transfers and just returning players. You basically just do everybody. So that's what I'm going to start doing now. Um, I'm going to start doing incoming freshmen, transfers, and returning players. So whoever you guys want me to review next, make sure you comment down below or comment on the Facebook group or even send me a private message on Facebook or on Twitter. Whichever one you guys prefer. But anyways, reviewing Johnny Duzong here. Um, I don't actually have his stats here with me because I just recorded this and I forgot I didn't have my I had my mic muted. So now I gotta now it's take two, which is fine. Cause last episode I had to do another take as well. So it's whatever, I'm used to it by now. But anyways, Johnny Duzong, he plays for UCLA. Uh, this year they are gonna be a uh, top five team coming into this year. Very talented team, and the reason that they're going to be a top five team is mainly because John Zong is coming back for his junior year, and that is phenomenal for Mick Cronin and the Bruins squad. <clears throat> so, like normal, five clips. Um, I'm going to play it out as it is without commentating, and then I'll review it and break it down for you guys, and then I'll play it out full speed again, but this time I'll commentate on it. So, that's normal format. Playing Michigan State in the playing game. All these clips are in the tournament, by the way. The playing Michigan State in the playing game. Um, when it goes through to the first round, down six points, 18 minutes ago in the second half. And uh, let's play it out. Let's get started. Okay, review it back. Nope, not play it. Damn it. I don't know why this thing's on here. Let me get rid of that. I don't think. There we go. Uh, I think I actually marked something. So, like I said, they're playing Michigan State. Michigan State, this is an out of bounds play here. Um, John DeJong, he's obviously number three. What he does here is a beautiful example of how you should come off your screen. I know I mentioned it uh, last time with Tai Tai Washington. John DeJong does it as well. This is what happens when you're a superstar. Is you gotta make superstar type plays, and you gotta make this simple play. You gotta have basketball IQ, you gotta piss off, put yourself in the correct position, and um, you gotta have knowledge on how to come off an off ball screen. And he has that type of knowledge, and this is why he gets a wide open jump shot here. So what he does, I did not mean to mark that. Excuse me, erase that. So what he does here is he's designed out of bounds play to specifically for him. Uh, that's what normal out of bounds plays is for to get your best player an open opportunity to shoot. So what he does here, um, number two is coming here. He's setting the screen obviously, and uh, like I was talking about with Ty Ty Washington, he he could easily if he wanted to could come off this screen wide and go right towards the corner for a wide open three or not a wide open three for a contested three actually. Because it would be a contest three. Because if he comes out wide here, it allows his defender to chase him and go over the screen. It allows him to, for, but it basically defeats the purpose of a screen. And even though he can hit this contested three, it's not. I would take a, I would take a wide open mid range jump shot or the contested three. And I know a lot of kids these days would say otherwise because they just want the most points possible. They want to shoot a three. They want to be like Steph Curry. But not everybody can be like Steph Curry. And uh, you got to make the correct basketball decision. So he makes the correct basketball decision coming off the screen. He comes off nice and tight. Allows number two to set a good hard screen on his defender. And this allows him to get a wide open jump shot. Look at, look at how all the open space he has here. Because the reason he has this open space is because not only did he come off tight on the screen. But this dude, he has to stay down here. He can't come up and guard Johnny Juzong. Because if he does that, John DeJong has an easy bounce pass or an alley-oop to number two here. And that's not what you want either. So he has to stay true to his man. He can't come play help side. And this just allows John DeJong to hit a wide open mid-range jump shot. So, 
Design play, beautiful read on the screen, comes off the screen hard, gets a jump shot. That's an easy bucket. They're down four points to the Michigan State squad. That's clip number one. Moving on to clip number two. Once again, playing Michigan State. They're actually down six this time. Ten minutes ago, this is a little bit fast forward from the last play you saw. Uh, Michigan State's actually switched to a 2 3 zone now. Um, John Rizong's in this corner. And this is just a simple play of putting yourself in the correct position and how to beat a zone. And uh, obviously, his teammates does a good job of moving out of the way. And uh, you'll just watch and see. Like I said, simple. Right? I mean, I don't see that this isn't a complex play. You don't see a guy. You don't see. I kept. I keep forgetting to do this. Got to make sure I go in the draw. Um, you. This is just a simple play. This is nothing complex about this. There's nobody here doing a backdoor screen for number one. For on uh, number one here. There's nobody. You don't see fourteen setting another screen. You know, it's not a double screen. This is nothing. It's just a simple thing of just running baseline to beat a zone. What he does here, as he's running the baseline, Tiger Campbell, number 10 here, does a good job of coming up a little bit here. Number 1 here does a good job of coming up a little bit towards the left. And that allows Johnny John to just come off hard on this baseline uh, baseline run here. He's literally just jogging, by the way. He's not sweating a lot. He's literally jogging his way, and he finds himself wide open here in the corner. And Jaime Hakez Jr. does a good job of finding him in the corner. So... Play it out. Looking for the pass. He drives baseline or goes baseline. Number one goes up. Bang. That's all day. Clean as you can get. Beautiful form. Beautiful shrug. See, right here, I forgot to mention this. He already has his hand up because he sees how much almost open space that he has. And this defender here, as number one's cheating up here, or coming up to the left wing, um, or right wing, excuse me. He has to stay true to his man. He can't cut. He can, he's not seeing Johnny Zone cutting baseline on him. So, as he's going by number fourteen, he always has his hands up because he knows he's going to be open. So play it out normally again because I actually forgot that um, to tell you guys that. Goes baseline here. No screen needed. Nothing. He knows he's open. Calls for the ball. Just gets himself set. Beautiful stroke. Beautiful form. And that's cash all day. Hook number three. I remember to do it this time. Let's go. This time they're playing. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but all these uh, clips are in the tournament, just because that's when he popped off the most. Um, or had a tremendous success and it was in the tournament. So now second round, well, first round play, playing six seed BYU. They're up 26-19. Five minutes to go, or five minutes thirty four seconds to go in the first half. And this is a before I play this. This is what I'm talking about. Pitting yourself in the correct. Position. This is exactly what I'm talking about here. So I'll play it out for you guys. Alright. So this play here, there's a couple things I want to talk about. And I know I said, I think it was two plays ago. Uh, it was either the last play or two plays ago. But I know I said it in the Tai Tai Washington video. And I know I was hopping on it in this video so far. And that's coming off screens. Obviously, he doesn't, when he comes off the screen here from 14, he doesn't get the ball because Hame takes a contested shot. Um, and this is all about him just putting himself in the correct position to get the offensive rebound, to get the to tip in for the UCLA. But what I want to harp on here, I will show you in two different examples, is how you should come off the screen. So I showed you how you should come off the screen if they're playing you, if they're playing up here tightly. And I said you should always come off the screen tight um, almost every time, especially when they're playing you tight. But if they're giving you this much space, that much space already, it doesn't matter if you come off wide or not. Because you can see he doesn't come off tight. He comes off a little bit tight. But he doesn't come off uh, like he did a couple plays ago. He comes out a little bit more wide. And that allows him to drive to the lane to put himself in the correct position to get the offensive tip in. 
But this is just an example of what like uh, different ways to come off the screen. If there, if he's if his man is playing him tight right here, and he tries to go out wide on this screen, it's not gonna work because number twenty is either gonna go under the screen or like I said, he's gonna go over the screen and chase him. But since he has this much space, he's able he's able to go out wide like this and I actually need to just change the color. He's able to go wide like that and find himself in the correct position. And obviously, he could easily, if Hame doesn't shoot this bad shot, which I think it's a bad shot, uh, it's a contested open jump shot, or a contested jump shot, he could easily dish it out to ha John Jazong here and he can make a play. He can either hit this mid range jump shot. But since the shot went up, instead of stopping about right here, we even or coming up a little bit more and stopping here. He keeps the play alive, but he keeps hustling because he has to because it's tournament play. He keeps the play going. Uh, 42 here, he has his eyes towards 14, the big man, because he wants to make sure he's boxing him out. He's not really looking at Johnny Jazong here. Johnny Jazong sees open space here. So what he does is just simply, he just goes down to piss himself in the correct position, and he's able to get the offensive tip in. Bring it back for you guys. Pass in. Comes off the screen, shot goes up, picks himself a good position, offensive rebound. Now they're up 28-19. So going up, that was clip number three. Now we're on, moving on to clip number four. Playing Abilene Christian. We'll put it into the draw format. Uh, rewind it real quick. So playing Abilene Christian, the 14th seed in the second round. This is uh, up 26-19. Key note though, why this is such a good play. Such a good basketball IQ play from Johnny Jazong. And it's very simple. All these plays are very simple, by the way. It's just basketball IQ. UCLA here. Zero points in the last five minutes and 27 seconds. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind as this play moves on. Okay. Like I said, zero points in the last like five minutes and thirty seconds. He dishes the ball to Hame Hakes Jr. here. Hame starts to post up his man, um, very far out. The, the, the I wouldn't call this a design play, but it kind of is a design play because they're playing in a two-three zone. I don't know if I mentioned that yet, they're playing in a two-three zone. Um, but this is more on Johnny Duzong's basketball IQ of like I said. Pitting himself in the correct position. That will be a common theme throughout this video. He pits himself in the perfect position to make a play. And this is also a key note on how you should not play a 2-3 zone. Because if Johnny John, look at it. He's already out here. He's all the way out, basically out to the logo here. He's not going to shoot this shot. Seth Curry would shoot this shot. A lot of young players would stay out here and shoot this shot. But he has basketball key, IQ, and he has knowledge, and he knows that they need a bucket, so he's not going to come out here and just, he's just going to pin himself in the correct position. So as 20 here makes a bad decision of hedging out or digging down low to actually try to steal the ball and knock it away from Jaime Hucker Jr., which, I mean, that's not a bad play, but he just stays out too long, and especially when you got a sharpshooter like Duzong out here with this much open space, and all he does it's literally, as this play moves on, as 20 dives down low, he stays way too long. Johnny Zong sees this, uh, sees this much open space. Um, Hame Hercus Jr. sees this as well, and all Johnny Zong does is just steps up a little bit and gets himself in shooting for him, and he knocks down the jump shot. Number 20, bad decision. I, It's not a bad decision, like I said, to hedge out or try to dive down low to steal the ball. But when you have a great passer like Hamaheke Jr. and you have a great sharpshooter like Johnny Duzong, there's no need for that. Trust your defender that's guarding Hamaheke Jr. down low that he's going to stop him from making a play. And you got you to just stay true. You got to stay home when Johnny Duzong can't give him this own open space. And uh, let me see. Makes him pay for it. Beautiful play. He gets a... Somehow, number 20 recovers from this, but still way too late. Too much open space. John Dizon knocks down the three and gives them a much needed, much needed score after going off of a zero point drought in the last 
like five minutes or yeah five minutes 30 seconds so we wind it and i'll commentate over it drops it down down to hamaka jr hamaka starts posting up 20 dives down low john yuzong bang all damn final clip of the video playing number one seed michigan in the sweet 16 the regional final um oh was this a sweet 16 <coughs> I think this was the lead eight, was it? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was the lead eight. Cause I think they beat Alabama on the Sweet Sixteen, if I remember correctly. But uh, don't quote me on that. But I'm pretty sure they beat Alabama on the Sweet Sixteen, and then they beat Michigan in the lead eight in the regional final. But uh, anyways, doesn't matter because they're playing Michigan right now. John Juzong's in the corner here. Keep that in mind. Once again, simple play. Okay, this is very simple. Michigan's in the main demand here. Um, like I said, coming off screens is very important when you're playing off ball. Playing the, coming off screens or doing a pick and roll session on ball, or when you have the ball in your hand, you're doing a pick and roll. That's a whole different story. I can do a whole another video on that, but I'm not. This is all about coming off the or coming off of an off ball screen and how you should read it. And how he reads this absolutely perfectly. He gets a double screen here, by the way, which is very important to remember. Not only does he get this screen from Jaime Hakez Jr., but he also gets the the first screen here from number two. I think that's his number. I can't really see. But he all he gets he gets a double screen here, so keep that in mind. And it is number two. He gets this screen originally. He has open space already. He has breathing room away from his defender. Now all he has to do is just make sure he reads the screen perfectly in order to get him the best shot because he always has wide open space. He always has breathing room. So what he does here, and keep in mind, and keep in mind what the two defenders, what this defender here does and what this defender here does. And especially keep an eye on this defender's uh, position here because he's trying, he's looking, he knows the screen's coming, but he has to stay true on Hamaheka Jr. Because if Jaime Hawkins Jr. starts to post up here, he's in the correct position to deny that post up. Or deny the post entry. So he's in a position for that right now. And that right there, look, keep an eye on the open space that I'm talking about. Still, he has wide open space. He has breathing room. Since he has so much breathing room, I'm guessing, I can't hear him, but just off of playing basketball myself and playing in the zone myself, I'm guessing 23 and uh, the defender here, they call out to switch because 23, he stops in his tracks to go at Jaime Hercules Jr. And this defender here starts to hedge out here because they call for a switch. And what Johnny Drazone does, as this defender, I mean, we already saw this, as this defender comes out here to try to deny the ball, Johnny Drazone could easily, a lot of players would do, would come out to here. But he doesn't do that. Since they call for a screen, or call for a switch, and this defender is hedging this way and goes over the screen, basically, what John Jujuzon does instead of coming out this way, or even coming out this way, coming tight or coming off tight on the screen, he just dives down low. Hey, well, he just dives to the corner, gets himself wide open, and that's a correct read because it allows him so much open space. And the defender is going to go over the screen. It's the same thing if 23, if he's tight on him, he goes over the screen. If you're coming off of a baseline off-ball screen and your defender starts to go over, let me waste all these lines so you guys can see better, and your defender starts to go over the screen, it's just simple. Just dive down to the corner and you'll get yourself open every single time. If they go under the screen, then that's when you come off tight or even maybe come out to here, but mostly come, out, come off the screen tight if they go under the screen. But if they go over it, that's when you dive down the corner like he does. And allows him to get wide open space. Look at that open space here from him. <clears throat> and the defender trying to block his shot here. And that's all day for Johnny Tuzong. So, goes down baseline, gets that first screen. They switch. Beautiful play. Beautiful read. Knocks it down. Nothing in net. And now they're up 3-2 against the number one seed in Michigan. Um, was that the final clip? That indeed was the final clip. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Countdown to Tip Off Player Review with Johnny Duzong. 
John Luzong is an absolute superstar, and he is one of, without a doubt, probably going to be my preseason player of the year. Um, I know I went on the Pac-12 predictions with Josh by posting my predictions for the Pac-12 conference this year, and uh, he was my preseason Pac-12 player of the year. And it's just a, a couple reasons why. If you want to come from this scouting report, if you want to get anything from this uh, like review of John Luzong, three things. One, the how to read a screen. Two, how to put yourself in the correct position to make a play or to um, put yourself in the correct position to potentially save an offensive possession. And three, the how to make the, bas- the correct basketball play. That one play that I showed you, I think it was clip number four against Evelyn Christian, when they was playing zone, he, kept things, he keeps things simple. He doesn't do anything complex. He literally just stepped up, knocked down the shot. He could have easily stayed out about 30 feet away from the basket. But no, he steps up a couple of possessions, excuse me, a couple of steps, and puts himself in a good position to hit the shot. John Drew is a superstar. He's going to be a lot of fun to watch in his junior year at UCLA. Cannot wait to watch the Bruins this year. Mick Cronin has done a hell of a job with the development of John Drew Zong. And that's why he's one of the top 10, top 5 players coming back. Or even in the nation, period. But, with that being said, that's the end of the video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss out on a video or upload. Also, I will be premiering these videos. I did it on the last video. I will be premiering these videos live. So whenever these videos start to go out, they will be broadcasted live. And you will be able to comment and watch with me as they are uh, uploaded so that's exciting i love that feature that youtube does uh, let me know who you guys want me to review next top incoming freshman a transfer coming in or a returning player let me know in the comment section on youtube um dm me on twitter or facebook or even comment on this video on facebook whenever i post the link just do whatever get a hold of me and let me know who you guys want me to review next but anyways that's the end of this video my name is Peyton A.K. and Mr. Recruiter, and I will see you guys next time. I'm out, y'all.